I want my wages. Zia, almost in tears, had the following conversation paraphrased with Yolanda, a member of her church. Zia, Sister Yolanda, is there any plan at all to ordain my husband as minister? Yolanda, surprised. Sister Zia, why are you asking me? I'm not the church pastor, neither am I a church ordained minister. Zia, I know that, but I also know that you are very close to the church leadership. Have you not heard anything at all? Is anyone even thinking of making my husband a deacon? He has been a very committed and hard worker in this church, and I think it's unfair that nobody seems to care that nothing has been done to reward him by placing him where he belongs, which is among the ministers. Every year, we keep hoping that he will be ordained, but our hopes keep, keep getting dashed. I don't know how long we can continue to endure this injustice. It's interesting to know that there are actually children of God who see church ordination as a reward for their commitment to God's service, but how they are mistaken. When a Christian has this wrong belief and then nobody ordains him, one of the things that can happen is that he becomes discouraged and stops serving the Lord, and that is when he actually disqualifies himself from getting the real reward for Christian service. Remember what Paul said in 2 Thessalonians 3.10, Whoever refuses to walk is not allowed to eat. No matter what your reason is for refusing to serve God, He will not reward you for services you didn't render. Another thing that can happen is that the believer who feels cheated continues to serve but with anger, bitterness and resentment towards his unit leaders and or pastors. Now the Bible says we should serve the Lord with gladness, Psalm 100 verse 2, King James Version. Those who serve Him with anger, sorrow and pain because they feel cheated or for any other reason, are walking contrary to his instruction and shouldn't expect him to accept or reward them for their service. There are believers who are fighting for church ordination because they believe that without it, they will be regarded as unserious Christians. But really, why should you care how others rate your Christian life and level? The Christian race is an individual one. All that matters is how God rates your performance. And in any case, being ordained doesn't make you better than the person who is not. Neither does being without a church title make you any less a Christian than the, than the person who has one. There are many Christians all over the world who are quietly serving God without anyone addressing them as pastor, deacon, or bishop, and yet they are probably impacting many more lives for Christ than most title carriers in the church. And what if it's not God's will for you to be ordained by your church? Wouldn't it be better for you to stay in the background and make God proud by your service to him than to be addressed by a title that he has not given to you while he shakes his head sadly because you are wasting away and don't know it? Whether or not you are a serious-minded Christian is not for anybody to judge. It's between you and the God you say you belong to. It's not every born-again Christian that will carry a church title. God is the one that should decide who does and who doesn't based on the assignment that he has for each of us. But it's unfortunate that just like so many other things in the body of Christ, the church of who gets ordained these days is no longer left in God's hands in a lot of cases. Speaking about our Lord Jesus, Isaiah the prophet said in Isaiah 11 verses 2 and 3, And the Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. He will delight in obeying the Lord. He will not judge by appearance nor make a decision based on hearsay. That's the New Living Translation. When Jesus was here, he wasn't making decisions based on anything other than the leading of the Holy Spirit. That should be the case with church leaders in choosing who is ordained for what. But many of them have been blinded by gifts and the quest for big tithes, offerings, and donations. Many who are not working in the Spirit get carried away by the eye service performed by some in their congregation. So they end up making wrong choices and ordaining people that God probably doesn't even recognize as his own. So even if you are offered ordination in your church, do not take it as a surefire sign that your life is right with God. One of the ways people show that they see ordination as a reward for their hard work is by celebrating it. To them, it's like being promoted in their secular job or winning a major contract. Some throw parties and invite their friends and family to come celebrate their ordination with them. Some post pictures and messages on social media to announce to the world that their labor over the years has paid off. If you celebrate ordination, what you are actually proclaiming is that you have no clue as to what ordination is for. Being ordained is not an achievement. It is a call to serve the master. Those who understand this tremble when called to come on board. They know it's a big responsibility. 
In fact, such people would not want to accept ordination except the Lord not only makes it abundantly clear that that is his will for them, but also assures and reassures them that he will be with them every step of the way. They go into periods of fasting and prayer before, during, and after the ordination ceremony. They want to work more carefully than ever because they understand that much is required from the person to whom much is given. Much more is required from the person to whom much more is given. That's Luke chapter 12, verse 48, Good News Translation. Are you one of those clamoring for church ordination? Stop. It's neither your birthright nor your salary. And getting it at all costs may turn out to be your undoing. May the Lord give us wisdom in Jesus' name. Amen.